It is a critical time for the nation's farmers and farm equipment makers. Jane Wells joins us from the World Ag Expo in California with that story. Jane, good morning. Hi, Becky. Yeah, you know, over 100,000 people are expected here to see this and kick the tires. And here are two trends to watch. The first is electric tractors. This is one from Fent, owned by Agco, coming out next year, first in Europe. Price unknown yet. Now, Kristen Owens at Oppenheimer says these small EVs may not be good yet for a big farm in the Midwest. They could be perfect here in California where you have high value crops like wine grapes and you can pass along any premium you might pay. And here's a second trend that farmers are watching. Move over Tesla. Uh, you're looking at fully autonomous driverless farm equipment from ag tech companies. Gus is a company working on a piece of equipment for deer. A startup called Actonomy has a machine being tested at a vineyard for Silver Oak Winery in Napa. And then there's this, a driver optional tractor from Monarch that's already on the market. It stops when it detects humans. It's being sold for $90,000, but here in California, you can get up to 80% of that covered by state government subsidies. Uh, these machines reduce the need for labor, reduce the wear and tear on a farmer. And since they only go eight miles an hour and they're not on the freeway, they're probably not going to be involved in some sort of NTSB crash investigation. Autonomy is one area where we're actually seeing adoption that could accelerate faster than what you'd anticipate and certainly faster than what we've seen in the on-road market. All right. A third trend, though, to watch potentially. Farm incomes are projected to fall uh, from a record $163 billion last year to $137 billion this year. Smaller tractor sales are also falling. Deutsche Bank and Bernstein think we've already reached peak ag spending, but Kristen Owen says volumes are still 25% below the last peak in 2013, partly due to supply chain problems, which could mean the peak might last another year. Her biggest concern, guys, tensions with China, by far our number one ag export country, and South America is standing by to fill the gap. Back to you. Jane, is there real demand for an electric tractor? Is that something farmers want, or is it something that they'll take if it's subsidized? I think you got it there in the second. I mean, they're interested in it. They want to know what the range is, uh, how much it saves them money in the long term. You don't want to spend big up top for something that you're not going to get the money back on. They're more interested, frankly, in the autonomous vehicles. And some, a company like Agco wants to make a traditional tractor, completely autonomous, all the functionality, a lot of what you're seeing right now are single function autonomous vehicles and farmers are going to want to buy, you know, just a regular old tractor that can do a lot of this stuff on its own. Even if it's sure. not fully autonomous, it's less wear and tear on the farmer if parts of the tractor can be done without him or her getting out all the time to, you know, check the sprinklers, the, the, the irrigation. Jane, as always, I learn something from you every time you're on. It's great to see you, and I'm sorry we have to run so quickly. We've got data on the other side. But Jane Wells, we'll see you later in the day.